All right, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. All right, editor, so you're gonna just walk, skip that part with me walking in and then just have me here sitting in the chair like this. And then with the three, two, one, rolling. Hey, how's it going everyone? GC Performance here, back with another video. And this is my first impression drive of my Elves Falith Evo. Today's video, we're gonna talk about the good and also the bad of this frame. Uh, I wanna give you guys my first initial impression, a 20 mile ride, uh, what I thought about this bike coming from someone who has pretty much only ridden hyper bikes their entire lives, like S-Works, like other bikes like that, uh, and give you guys my take on this bike itself on that first 20 mile ride. I know 20 miles is nothing, um, but I had a lot of people ask me over and over and over again through Instagram, through YouTube, through emails, uh, what my take is on this bike because the fact that they're uh, holding off, which is pretty crazy on my review on the bike. Um, so I want to give you guys my standpoint of where we're at now. Uh, and just to clear this up as well, I have zero, no affiliation with the brand Elves. I do not sell them in my store. I do not get a kickback if you buy them online from any kind of link. I just show you guys where to buy them down below. Um, nothing comes about it. I reached out to Elves because I thought the bike looked really cool and they sent me a bike frame. I said, hey, that'll feature on my channel. It's gonna be on the channel for a while so I can do a longer term review on it. I can put test products on it to try and test them out. Um, but again, I have no affiliation to this so I wanna give you guys the most honest reviews possible, which I told Elves about. So hopefully you guys can enjoy and get some honesty out of that. This is my first real ever China bike um, frame that I ever got to ride. I usually ride Tarmax, Venges. Um, beforehand, we had Trex in here, we had Giants in here. I've only read, ridden big manufacturer name brand bikes. I did get to ride around a Windspace T1500 as well before, just around the block a couple times, but not for long, crazy terms rides. So this is my personal bike. I get to play around with ride and work on itself and give you guys my honest review. So one, first and foremost, the price of it was absolutely amazing. So I thought, why not get on the channel and put some test stuff on here? So now that that's out of the way, we can talk about today's video. Uh, we're gonna go into the good of the bike, how it rode, how it felt while riding compared to other bikes as well. Talk about the weird sizing that this bike has as well. Um, it's a very weird thing. This is the extra large frame, but they classify as a 54. Uh, I myself actually asked for a 56 before I got the bike. But seeing Cam Nichols' video where he got his and he had his fitting and the seat post was really weird and he actually downsized, made me reach out to Elves and downsize my bike as well, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, I don't have any riding footage. I just bought an Insta360 camera myself. So I'm getting that there and I'll have riding footage of me so you guys can see. But in terms of that, this was one of the most comfortable bikes I've ever been fit on. Like, I don't know if it's just because I always try to look pro on a bike, but this was a very comfortable bike for me. And then also we'll talk about the bad of the bike as well. Um, the problems I had with it, which weren't a lot, but I did want to point them out just so that way buyer beware of everything that could come about. So uh, you guys can see I already made some changes. Like I removed the two by and I put on this badass one by chain ring, which we'll talk about them in a second. And then also full disclosure, all the other products you see on here, like the OSPW, like the Nova the Ride, which they've been a partner on the channel for a while and the bottom bracket. Uh, I do have discount codes down below. I do get affiliation with that, but I've been running them on my Tarmac SL7 for a while. I had them on my Athos. I've had them on my white Tarmac comp as well. I like their OSPWs. I think they give great value for that. And also the bottom brackets are killer as well. Uh, and also the Elite Drive wheels. I reached out to them. These are 65 millimeter wheels. I also do have a discount code for those as well. $1,100 for a deep dish carbon fiber wheel. Pretty lightweight with a carbon spoke and ceramic bearings. I think those are great too. Um, I had the 50Ds for a while. I put about a thousand kilometers on them no issues with them within that thousand kilometers. So uh, that's my take on that as well. So if you guys are interested in the bottom bracket, the OSPW or the wheels, I do have discounts down below. So let me go ahead and we'll get a closer look at this bike. Now you're gonna cover there, maybe like an intro like explosion. Before I get into all the techie stuff, I just kind of want to show off my drivetrain and show off this cool new chain ring I got. This is from a company called Alugear. Uh, they're a company. When I first did this video, I had the 105 stock crank on here, and I believe they only come in a 50 34 tooth chain ring, uh, which I thought was not going to work for me because of the fact that this is a complete aero bike. I have 65 millimeter deep wheels on here. I wanted a bigger gear to push, so I said, Hey, if anyone knows down in the comments below, let me know. I was thinking about Rotor, I was thinking about Wolf Tooth. I didn't even know about this company, so someone told me about them. I looked at them, and this was one of the only companies I saw that made Shimano 1x chain rings. Uh, all the way up to like a 56 tooth chain ring on there. I think they go all the way down to a 46, you can get a 48, 50, 52, 54, and 56. This is a 52 right here, 
It works with the 105 12 speed. That was another hard thing to find out is stuff that works with the new 12 speed. So this all works with the new 12 speed. They even have these little cover plates if you want to make them look much cleaner, but they also have different colors. Um, really like the chain ring. It performed really, really well on the ride. Didn't have any drops in there. I'm a big fan of one buys as is. I wish Shimano made more proprietary one by stuffs in there. So as of right now, I removed the front derailleur, shoved the DI2 cable back inside this port, and it's just sitting there right now. And I just have a one by setup on this crank. It does work with 12 speed. This is a SRAM axis chain with a 12 speed drive chain on here with a 12 speed Nova to ride 105 DI2 and a 12 speed crank. Like I said, you can get the covers as well for extra, but they weren't that bad for the chain ring. Um, I don't know the exact price. I'll put a link down below to the company. But big shout out to them for throwing out to me. I reached out to them and said, hey, I think your stuff looks cool. And uh, I thought it was, looked really, really nice. So a 52 on here on the front with a 1134 tooth in the back for the 105 cassette, which again, I'm not a big fan of, but whatever. And then the Nova to ride OSPW. The paint scheme on this bike, the copper, the paint job, amazing with the copper chain, with the copper OSPW, and even the copper Nova to ride uh, bottom bracket. I mean, I think the color scheme on here is badass. I would like to change this out for a black set down the road, but I absolutely love it. The shifting on the 105 is amazing. The hoods are identical to Altega or uh, Durace in terms of ergonomics and shifting feel. The brakes feel solid. Um, big, big, I'm, I'm really happy with the, with the drivetrain and how it performs. The bottom rack here is buttery smooth. I'll give you guys a free up sound test at the end of the video. But yeah, so that is what I did to the drivetrain. So thank you to Allo Gear. Now, for the fun stuff, for the bike itself, you guys saw me do an unboxing on this frame where I got, showed you guys the ins and outs of this frame inside the carbon, the frame itself, uh, the, bo the bottom bracket fitting as well. I was actually very impressed of how this frame turned out. The paint quality on Elves bikes I've seen in the past, not just the Falith Evo, but also the Falith Pro. Um, what I've seen for the paint is really clean. They have the brush logo on the Ls right there. Their chameleon from the green to the copper is sick. And the paint job, like I said, the finish quality is absolutely beautiful. Um, in terms of like a rating out of what you get for price point, I've seen much bigger manufacturers out there charge way more for frames, anywhere for four to $6,000 for a frame and the paint not be anywhere near that. So for a company like this to be a $1,300 frame set out there to give you these kind of paint choices, which they have, I think like eight different colors, and then even if you want to change to a custom paint color where they have like a, a really cool dynamic web page where you can kind of make your own custom layouts on here, uh, it's only $50 more for that. I think that's a really, really big nod to the consumer to be able to go ahead and do that. So like I said, the first actual initial quality of the frame itself, no real issues of what I saw internal of the carbon layup and also the paint quality. It was very nice to work on. The bottom bracket on here is a PF30. Um, which I thought was a little bit weird. I feel like we're going back in time with this. Now, as long as these are made right, and as long as the holes are made rounded, there shouldn't be any kind of issue. With this Nova to Ride OS, uh, bottom bracket, it does thread into itself. And also when you do buy this frame, they also give you a bottom bracket included. You just choose your spindle type, and they'll give you a bottom bracket included with the frame, usually with ceramic bearings. Um, but like I said, throw some grease in here. This bottom bracket threads into itself. Really shouldn't be an issue. Just torque it down to spec. And uh, these type of bottom brackets in the past, even with um, frames that had bad tolerances, usually fixed itself. But I thought it was a weird choice for them to go with the PF30, but we'll see how it holds up over length. Now, the frame was $1,300. And then I believe if you bought the, I think they have it on sale right now for $1,100. And then if you bought the handlebar with the frame at the time, it brought this thing down from $300 to $110 for a one-piece bar and stem, which is carbon fiber. Um, very stiff. I really like the ergonomics of the bars. I actually like the flare out. The drops themselves flare out a little bit. The uh, drops themselves also are narrower down here, very similar to a Shimano Pro Vibe. And the reach from here to the shifter hoods is nice. I really didn't have any issues with it. They do give you an integrated mount as well for a computer that goes underneath here as well. You can choose whatever kind of bar length and uh, handlebar width and stem length on there. So I went with a 110 millimeter to a 42 centimeter because that's what I'm comfortable with. Um, but yeah, I, I thought the bike came out very smooth. Also with this was the sizing. This was always a question to me, which is still a question right now that I have. Uh, this is right now an extra large and they classify this as a 54. Uh, when I first got in contact with them and we go ahead and, and, we, and I got the bike uh, 
the bike that I want and everything like that, I'm like, hey, I usually ride a Tarmac SL756. I've ridden an Avenge 56. I ride a 56 all my life. I'm six foot, have pretty long arms. I've always ridden a 56 with a 120 stem. Really haven't had any issues with it. So I was like, let me go ahead and do that. Now with this bike, the issue is that this top tube on here sits really high because of this right here, this little extra piece. When this is slammed all the way down, this is meant to be flush. So the standover height on here is very, very tall. So when you choose a 56, if I was to go up a little bit taller, it almost feels like a 58. And the seat post be sticking out right there and I thought that it didn't look aesthetically nice like we saw in Cam Nichols' video. So I went ahead and reached out to him after I saw that where he sent his back and he downsized. I wanted to go ahead and do the same thing. I chose a 54. Now, a couple things to me, the head tube was a little bit lower, the stack was a little bit lower, and also the seat post, I thought I wasn't gonna have enough, but this is the seat post for me right now. Like I said, I'm six foot with pretty long legs, which I'll show you guys a picture of me on the bike. Um, but it came out very smooth. This bike to me, and again, I have nothing to do with this company, is one of the most comfortable fitting bikes I've ever been on in my life. I don't know if it was because it was free. I mean, I paid for the components obviously, but I don't know if it was because it was free, but riding this bike, this is a new saddle as well, which I'll talk about, but riding this bike felt comfortable. When I'm in the seat, reaching to the hoods, it felt amazing. I was worrying that this was gonna be too low. I wasn't gonna have enough stack there, but it felt phenomenal. Riding on the road, the vertical compliance of this bike felt really, really good. I'm riding 25 millimeter tires right here and I'm riding TPU tubes as well at 100 PSI and it felt phenomenal. I, had, I only did 20 miles, but hands down, over my Tarmacs, over my Venges, it felt really, really comfortable. Now, I don't know if it's uh, me telling myself that I may should maybe downsize on my stems on my 120, um, but the bike really, really felt good. It felt very fast at high end speeds. It felt very stable at high end speeds, but it is a full on aero bike. Remember this. I don't think this is a bike that should be ridden in the mountains. I don't think this is a bike that should be ridden if you have up and down hills. This is a very, very fast aero bike. It's very aggressive and it's meant for that. It is UCI legal. I think it'd be a nice crit bike as well if you get used to it, but it did feel a little bit sluggish at the beginning of stoplight. So if I come to a stoplight and start back up from zero, yes, I got deep dish wheels in here. I got very aggressive tubes on here as well. So it did feel a little bit sluggish from the start, but nothing that I'm going to get dropped if a group starts off fast or if we slow down, it's nothing that I can't handle going up to speed again. But just noticeably different from a bike with shallow depth wheels and a pinnerel like this, with a bike with shallower depth wheels and shallower tubes as well, it does accelerate quicker than something like this. So keep that in mind. Now, this was the biggest issue I had with this L's Falleth Evo. Everything was going smooth. I had no issues installing the bottom bracket. I had no issues with the seat post itself. I had no issues running the internal cables for the brake hoses. Actually, the handlebar setting was actually really easy. Shove them in through the bottom, shove them through here. The spacers themselves were very easy to install. Breakaway spacers, ran the cables up through. Nothing really issue. Now when it came to the front brake, we ran into an issue. Uh, and this is where you always have to be kind of weary when buying uh, cheaper stuff like this, direct to consumer and from, uh, you know, j just for a cheaper price point, like a China bike like this. Uh, this bike, like I said, retail for 1300 bucks. This front brake itself, I kept on trying to align it, but no matter what I did on here, I consider myself a pretty pro mechanic myself. No matter what happened to this bike, the caliper would not line up. I would keep on tightening this thing down. It would turn to the side. I went ahead and re-bled the brake. I went ahead and opened up the pistons themselves, loosened up the brake bolts, put the rotor back in there, squeeze it tight. No matter what I did, it always looked like it would off center, or off kilt. So I'm like just thinking to myself, do I need to use the resurfacing tool or refacing tool on this thing? Because there is a tool by Park Tool that sometimes paint finish can be bad, carbon finish can be bad on these holes where these disc brakes go into. They sell a tool by Park Tool that will attach to it through axle, and then you refinish or resurface or reface the uh, brake bolt going into it. Now, I don't have that tool in our store because I'm not going to lie to you, majority of the bikes we sell here, I've never had the issue with that bike. There's always been a, a way to go ahead and angle it. There's always been a way to adjust it. And I haven't had any issues with it. It is a $600 tool, so I didn't have it. So I called up one of my buddies at another shop. And I said, hey, I don't have this tool. Can you guys lend it to me? They said, we can't lend it out. I was like, that's fine. Can I drop it off for, for a pair? That's fine. We'll go ahead and do it. Not only did they have to, at first they thought it was the mount itself. It was not the mount. They had to change the mount. They had to reface the actual interface for the fork itself. 
But then they also said they had to file down some of the frame, which I'm going to show you guys a picture of. So if you guys notice in that photo, some of the fork was sticking out, touching this mount, which was causing it to not clamp down correctly. And that was causing it to throw it off and be always misaligned on here. The issue has since been solved. Um, again, when I was talking to the shop over there, we were going back and forth. They're like, yo, you should just reach out to this company. We fixed it. The problem was fixed. It didn't really bother me. But if I was to pay out the money for this, I would want this thing to be flawless. Again, that's $1,300. It's no small fee. Even when you're talking grand scheme of big name manufacturers, still, $1,000 a drop on a bike any day is very expensive. So this was the one issue. Now, the issue was solved. You have these resurfacing tools at every single bike shop here. I know a lot of people who buy these bikes might want to take on a project of their own. But these are issues that can be fixed. But this is just something I wanted to bring aware to your guys' attention for this issue. But other than that, besides that, I did run into one more issue with the derailleur hanger. They give you two options. They give you this option right here, and then they give you a direct mount to this 105 Di2. When I put it on with my 105 Di2, it was throwing it into the carbon spokes of here, and it wasn't lining up. So I had to remove the direct mount derailleur hanger that I gave with the bike and put on the stock one again, and then there was no issues. All said and done, after that, the DI2 cables are a little bit weird for where they place them at, and also this front derailleur because it has to come down and around. But other than that, the bike has been working phenomenal. No other issues in that, but those are just minor details I wanted to bring up to you guys for you guys' attention. And just for a quick shot to give you guys an overview of the stem, the stem, I mean, the quality of the carbon here, very stiff stem, very stiff handlebar in terms of what you get for it for a one-piece bar and stem. Very little no flex. And like I said, I love the ergonomics of here. They feel natural in my hand here. I also have this little drop down area that I do like to ride in right there. Um, but the bike performed really well. It's a thick, aggressive, girthy top tube, girthy stem of a bike. And uh, yeah, I'm a sucker for aero bikes. That's why I reach out to Elves. I use the power of my YouTube channel to go ahead and try to get one of these things. The seat post is clunky, but the bike works phenomenal. I don't think there's any really kind of issues on there. I could imagine running a 28 or a 30 on here, the bike will be smooth as a Cadillac. People will say that the back of the rear tire doesn't fit right up against the frame. People will say that it does have a little bit more rake here and doesn't fit tucked up underneath there. But again, in a Peloton group, in a group together, with the, how much carbon is on this bike with deep dish wheels, those are marginal, marginal, very, very small differences that maybe if you're racing for first and second and like a... UCI Championship, sure, that's what you're going to want. But this bike holds speed very, very well. I'm excited to ride in some groups. Um, it held speed very well just by riding along. And like I mentioned before, this is a new seat to me. This is an S-Works Roman Evo. We had some issues with this right here, so I just went ahead and took it to 155. Maybe this is a credit to why I was so comfortable on the bike too because it's my first time riding this regular Roman Evo. But it was phenomenal. I, I had... Maybe it was just excitement. We'll figure out later on down the road of this channel, but sometimes you get that new bike excitement, but the bike held out really nice. Tire size on here, max tire clearance is 700 by 32C. These look gapped out for a 25 in here. Uh, I don't think I'll ever put a 32C on here, but it can take it if you like. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Um, let me know if you have any questions here. I'm going to show you guys kind of a side by of what I look like on the bike. So you guys can get an idea. And then I'll have some video riding footage of this bike later on down the road. Once I get the proper equipment for it. And I'll give you a free buy sound test at the end of this video right now. Whoa. All right, so. Yes, I'm fat. All right. But six foot tall. My hand is at the hood right here, comfortable. Not that big of a drop. I really don't have any issues with like this position right here. And then foot position right here. I do have a little bit more room to go up on the seat, but I want to kind of run a little bit lower. I've been seeing pros run stupid low lately. Remember back in the day, like the reference point for a good leg length, a good leg length angle was like 30 degrees. I'm seeing pros now around like 35, 40. So I'm gonna try a little bit lower on here. And um. Yeah, the bike feels phenomenal. Very excited for this bike. Absolutely love it. All right, so now what we've all been waiting for, Drive 65D, Nova to ride OSPW with a 105 Di2. 
Alu Gear 52 tube chainring, Nova Tribe OSPW, and a Press Fit 30 bottom bracket. Here we go. So, machine, steady, as all hell at top speed. The bike is smooth. That is a beautiful bike. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this video. I hope that you guys have, if, if you guys have any questions, let me know down below in the comment section. And I hope to do plenty more riding videos with this bike right here. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.